Hello and welcome to this video where we will define retaining walls in Kubla Cubed. A retaining wall, as shown in this diagram, is a structure that prevents soil and other material on one part of your site from collapsing or running off into another part. You often see retaining walls in terrace landscaped areas or at the side of roads where the road is passing through steep terrain. From an engineering perspective, there are different types of retaining wall. Here's a diagram that shows the varying types. Although in the context of Kubla Cubed, we are usually just focusing on the earthwork section, which will be an upper level, a steep drop, and then the lower level. The upper level of the wall is often marked on site plans as top of wall, or TW, and the bottom of the wall is the toe, or BW. When defining a retaining wall in Kubla Cubed, you need to create a hard change in the elevation of your topography. Trying to do this with contour lines or points can be tricky and inaccurate, because often you won't get a clearly defined steep drop unless you've used a large number of points or a very small contour step. So now we're going to go through a couple of different methods that we recommend. First, we will define retaining walls using break lines in a feature surface. Before we begin, let's understand what a feature surface is. A feature surface is made up of contours, break lines and points within a boundary outline. We call these elements elevation features. And these elevation features collectively define the topography of your feature surface. OK, so let's explore each of these components. The outline represents the boundary of the feature surface. Most of you are already familiar with spot levels and contours, but break lines may be new to you. Break lines are like contour lines, but they differ in one key aspect. The points along the break line can have varying elevations, unlike contours, which have a fixed elevation along their length. Break lines are typically used to represent hard edges, such as retaining walls or the sides of roads. They help to accurately depict significant changes in the topography. Now let's quickly go over how to trace a break line. When tracing a break line, it's really useful to know that if you leave a point blank, the elevation will be interpolated by neighboring points. If you make a mistake, simply press the backspace key to remove the recently added points and continue drawing the break line using your mouse. In this example, we have a retaining wall along this edge. To represent it accurately, we'll need to trace two break lines one for the top of the wall and one for the bottom. First, let me show you the manual method. Click on the break lines tab, then click the plus icon next to the pencil to start drawing the line. Using the left mouse button to trace the line and add the corresponding elevation values. Now that we've traced the top of the wall, we can proceed to trace the bottom. However, if the wall has a regular distance across and step down from the top, for example, 0.5 foot across and 3 foot down, we can utilize the offset tool to simplify the process. You can find the offset tool in the tools list represented by the hammer and spanner icon. Click on offset and select the top of the wall line that you have just drawn. Specify the distance it should be offset in the XY plane, for example, 7 foot, and in the Z adjustment, set the desired drop in elevation. For example, minus two foot for our wall height. If you prefer rounded corners, you can enable the option to round the corners. Additionally, there's the option to delete the original line if it's not needed. Click finish, then okay. Now, if we look at the model, you can see that the retaining wall is accurately defined. With these break lines, defining a retaining wall within a feature surface becomes straightforward. You can also import break lines from a CAD file, provided that they are 3D polylines. If you have 2D polylines, you'll need to manually input the varying elevation values along the line. And that's it. In a nutshell, this method allows you to accurately define retaining walls using break lines within a feature surface. The next method involves creating retaining walls, not through break lines on a feature surface, but by using the side batters or boundary elements within Kubla Cubed. Now you might be wondering, what exactly is a side batter? Well, it's quite simple. 
An element surface is connected to the ground by a side batter with a specified ratio that we can set. This feature allows us to create retaining walls seamlessly. Let's take a closer look at a specific example within our project. Here we have a second tier terrace and it's set with a side batter ratio of 1 in 1. What this means is that for every unit of height, there is an equal unit of width in the side batter. This way, Kubler Cubed intelligently joins the surface elements to the ground with a specified side batter, effectively creating a retaining wall. In this method, the Kubler Cubed elements that come into play are the platform, the feature surface, and if you have a tin already defined in CAD or XML, a triangle surface. Each of these elements can have a defined side batter. So if your site involves terracing, like the one we're working on, you can define the perimeter of the elements and then let Kubler Cubed side batter generation create the retaining walls. Now let's start this project from scratch. We'll begin with this meadow area as our existing ground. And the first step is to add a feature surface. As we have a CAD file site plan, we can import the outline and points from the file. So add a new filter and then highlight the outline you wish to import. Then once you can see it and you're happy, click OK. Then change the outline to extrapolate and then add your points. So the boundary outline levels will be set by the inner data points. Add a new filter for those points and then you can import those as well. Click OK and you can see them on screen. And OK again and it will show in the cut and fill calculations. And then set your side batter as you require for your retaining wall. So in this instance, it has been set to one in two. Moving on to the next terrace, it's a flat area where we plan to incorporate a swimming pool. To achieve this, we'll use a couple of platforms. However, it's essential to note that the main platform should not cut into the ground. To ensure this, we can utilize the mode option where we can change it from cut and fill to fill only. This setting instructs a platform element to only calculate the fill in the designated area, which is particularly valuable when creating retaining walls using side batters. We'll also add the swimming pool using another platform. This time I'm going to trace the outline with the left mouse button and right click to finish. Finally, for the third terrace, we will use a triangle surface. A triangle surface allows us to import a predefined tin defined in an XML or CAD file. Browse to locate the file containing the tin and select the tin that you wish to import. Hubler Cubed can join the triangles from the tin to the ground with a side batter in the same way as a feature surface or platform. And here you can see that side batter has been set to 1 in 0.5 to give a steeper gradient to the retaining wall. And there you have it. Three terraces which have been created in three different elements, all with differing side batters to represent three types of retaining walls. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and informative and we would love to hear any questions or comments that you have. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more great content.